All right, guys, I got me another little camera holder. We're going to do a bow build today. We might go in depth with it. We might not go in depth with it. Um, you guys know that I just bought the Revix and I absolutely love it, but I bought it in the 34 um, 70 pound. I'm going to use that bow as like a bow hunter series, shooting at tack, stuff like that. And uh, I wanted to build me another 3D bow, an actual like 3D bow. So last year I shot a um, inline five, loved it. It was at 60 pound. I wanted a 70 pounder because both, uh, I just shoot 70 pound better. So I picked me up a black 70 pound inline five and we're gonna set this thing up. Um, friend of mine wanted my other inline so I sold it to him that's why I don't have it um, I could have just relimbed it of course but you know what I can deal on this thing we're gonna open it up and see how this all black bow looks and uh good thing about this thing is the inline fives were rated at a higher IBO speed I think this was rated at like 345 and it shoots a little bit faster than the Revix does. Um, this is going to be a bow that I will shoot the uh, the known 40 class with. So speed is not an issue. I can shoot it whatever. And I'm not, I'm not shooting ASAs or nothing like that. So also I'm going to show you guys how you tune with these things. Another prime hat for the collection. Um, so you guys know, you've heard me talk about it. get this where it don't catch on fire so the inline five in order to tune this bow right here's your knocking point and it's two inches above the center line of the bow so i'm going to show you all about that so when you tune one of these inline bows the throat of the grip roughly is your um let me get this thing in there okay Root of the grip. All right. So the throw of your grip, that's your center line of the bow. And it should be about two inches roundabout. Um, yep, exactly. Two inches above the center line of the bow is your knocking point. Now, your arrow is going to run downhill slightly. I'm going to show you guys all about that. So that was pretty much just by the way that the modules were on these bows um it's completely normal i know i've seen a lot of guys flipping out freaking out because they can't get their inline to shoot you can't you cannot set this bow up with levels sorry guys you can't do it you got to go by the the um let me go ahead and put this right here you got to go by the book so I'll show you, and this is one of the, it's, it's the way that the knock travel was on these things. Let me get that camera back too, where you guys can see me a little bit more. Um, had a lot of guys asking me, why can't I get my thing to tune? I'm trying to shoot it down the middle. It won't, it won't work. You, you just, it won't. Um, let me get this back here. You know what? Let's try it up here. Let's aim it down toward me. No. Let's go right here. I'm trying out, trying out a new way to record here. I'm gonna turn it around too. No, 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 no. So, with the inline five and the other inline series bows, you gotta set it up the way I wanna do it. So where the knock needs to be is right here. Too many people, and I know that there are shops out there that have tried to set theirs up you know 90 degrees with levels it won't work right here knocking point all right knocking point for you for your bow is approximately two inches above the center of your string so if you measure center center you get your center two inches above that is your knocking point it's right there in the book. So I'm gonna change the draw length, get it to 29 and a half. 
and then we'll start putting this thing together. Um, it's really simple. So this bow's already on 29. So all you need to do, ah, my clamp's working really good today. All I'm gonna do, on the end line, this is really crucial. So make sure you move this stop first. Don't forget about it. Move the stop. We're gonna go back one hole. Move this one to number three. That'll give us 29 and a half. 29 and a half. Let's double check our book. Wait a minute. I might have just told you wrong. I think this one, let's see here. Yeah. I gotta go in between, I think, three and two, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I might have to go straight to 30 with this one. I don't remember. It's 70 on the nose, too. Hmm. All right, I'm going to play with it right quick and move these modules. I've got other videos of changing the modules on these things or rotating them. Good thing is you don't have to put it to press. Let's see here. I should just be able to back it up when it will be good. So. All right, boys, got the heater ripping. And um, so the first thing you gotta do is move this, this little pin right here. So I went back to three. I took my screws out of my module. You can do this without a press. That's gonna push down on it. Flip it over to three. Gotta repeat the process on this side. Draw length will be good. Then we're gonna mount the rest up. Look at this bow. It's like a satin, it's like a satin black almost a silver this thing is beautiful um you know what i'm gonna film some of this I'm trying out the uh i'm not gonna have to solo film for much longer gracious up peter's putting out some heat so this will probably be the last quote unquote bow build video I'll do for a long time unless I'm building someone else's bow. I wouldn't have went with this bow. The only reason I did was because I like the speed of the inline. I shot the inline great. Um, I really only sold my other inline to buy the Revix. And um, I love the Revix. It's a great bow. And um, But I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do different things with it. Um, it'll be, like I said, a attack bow because this thing's going to be set up with heavy stabilizer bars you know this is not going to be something that i'm going to take to total archery challenge again i already did that once and it was it was rough because this bow my other one i guarantee you i had 10 pounds worth of stabilizer bar sites it felt like it felt like a hundred pounds after the the end of total archery challenge. I want something that I can make like a bow sling for, or like get a bow sling, throw it on my back, keep going. But it'd be hard to do with some big monster stabilizer bars on it. And this bow will have our custom merit archery design stabilizer bars. We are here. Currently where we're making them, three and three, three, one, two, three. I always double check it, guys. I mean, this, that'll save you on tuning and stuff, too. It would have been nice if Prime was able to make these bows where you could set it up 90 degrees and shoot it through the middle. Um, you know, some people buy these bows, they don't know. You know, they don't know. And then they fight to them. Um, a knock low tear um, and it's really aggravating especially once you have everything's tied in your peep sights in 
And then once you have to move that, I mean, almost sometimes you'll have to move it up an inch um, if you run it through the middle. And then you got to move your peak sight back up and all that. And it's just a pain in the ass. Prime solved that with Redix. Oh. I know it looks like these bows have crazy cameling. That's how it's designed whenever you, when you draw this bow back, everything comes in line. Everything is straight down the middle. And um, I really love these bows. If you guys can't tell, I get fired up about them. Um, I really love the inline bows. And uh, they're great. I mean, they're great. So you can get these online right now, fairly cheap. Um, I would encourage shooting the Revix first though, because that Revix is a dang good bow. But if you're a little strapped on cash or whatever, you can pick these bows up brand new on eBay, really cheap. So that's just another option. You know, people want to get into archery and all that and get them a good bow. Boom. Mount the old Hemsky rest on here. Trying to make sure I got all my bolts too. Another thing, a lot of people don't know this. On these primes, your stabilizer bar, back bar mount, mounts on the inside of the riser. They changed that on the Revix. So on the Revix, it now mounts on the outside. I like that better. This mounted on the inside is a pain in the butt sometimes. It can be, um, especially if you're like me and you you share the back bar mount between two bows. Um, I don't have to anymore. So that's why this one's getting this AAE grabber. That's the knock on one. And it'll stay on here for good. Because my other bow, I'm just going to run the front stabilizer bar. It's actually going to run just this one. And this is one of our custom-made bars. I'm going to take these weights off. And I've got some more weights for the back bar right here. Here's one of our back bars. Um, like I said, everything that we're doing is custom. So whatever length you want, you can get, I think. So I'm gonna get this screwed on, make sure I don't cross thread it. Cause it'd be easy to do. And then we'll get up here and do the rest. So yeah. All right, boys. So now that we got that, I need to slow my roll and just take my time and make a good uh, build and a good video. Got the Hansky Insight people. I put the peep in very last. Um, once I tune it, just in case I gotta cut some stuff loose and move or something like that, you don't have to do that. That's just the way that I do it. Um, especially with something that's not shooting exactly down the middle. Sometimes you have to do a little tweaking, which I've set up a bunch of these bows and helped a lot of people set theirs up, and we've always had very good luck with them. I wish that uh, I wish that these bows were still in production. I, I, I've I've said this, and I'm gonna say it again. Um, I wish that manufacturers would go to just putting a bow out every two years if they can. You know, I don't know how the how these manufacturers are set up, but I think that, and this goes for all manufacturers, it's not just Prime or anyone, but I feel like if a bow company put a bow out every two years, they could really do the R&D, they could have all of their parts, tooling, everything ready to go. I think that you could build the bows cheaper. You wouldn't have to do the massive price that you do on these so you'd be essentially selling let's say a matthews v3x which their new bow is essentially the same as last year's 
But let's say if they just left it the same, which I guess technically they did. But think about how much that saved Matthews on manufacturing. I mean, think about that. You can use the same, all the same fixturing and all that stuff. And that's just, that's all the companies, you know, that's just my, my thought on it is, you know, they could build a bow every two years, put another bow out, manufacture this, these bad boys for what, a solid year. You could just manufacture them. And uh, then I guess manufacture is needed. I don't know how that works. That's, I don't know. That's just my thought process on it. Here's another little cool thing from Prime. This right here is your axle, or it snaps on your axle right here. And this is for your drive cable for your limb driven wrists. That's one of my favorite things about Prime. Boom. So, I went ahead and mounted my sight mount. So, let's run down on some parts. So, um, pretty much what my goal is of this bow is to build like the ultimate 3D bow. And um, there was a few things I learned last year that helped me make the, all the decisions on this build. One being the wrist type. So before I just shot like the blade and sometimes when you're, you're shaking a little bit, you're trying to draw back and, and you might be at a funky angle or something, if you don't have like a larger wheel tail blade, your arrow kind of jump off there. At least it's happened to me. It happens to everybody. And um, that gets on my nerves so much. So I wanted something that really held the arrow on. Let's say, you know, you're in a hurry to back. Your dang air falls off there. You got to reset your shot. It's mentally frustrating. Um, I've done it and it's embarrassing. Um, it can be very embarrassing. Needless to say. Uh, that's just one little thing. I mean, you don't have to, I mean, you know, you can shoot a, I mean, you know, it just depends on who you are. This is just what I prefer. Uh, this is what I wanted to go with. Was this type of rest. And it looks like we're already set down the middle. Now with the prime, with the prime, if you're shooting a hand ski rest, you got to keep it. You can't run it all the way up. If you do, your blade is going to come in contact with your riser. You got to keep that thing that right to you. And that is a fact. Let's make sure we don't get into the cables any. We'll slide it forward just a hair. But that's just um, some of the little tricks that I found to set these things up. Well, like I said, you know. Actually, we're going to have to go to the front hole. Oh. There we go. I need something to feel right. This way we can push our rest just a little bit forward, but not too much. We want to keep it out of the way of everything. Right there, I've got a little shelf contact. Let's move it back. Shelf contact. I'm going to have to run this set bolt. On in, we're gonna get it clear. There we go. Put it round about right. I haven't used this exact style of rest, so I've used one close to this one, but <clears throat> not exactly this one. I am gonna have to run it on the back hole. Which is still fine. We have plenty of clearance. We're not we're not interfering with anything. So that's the main thing is keep the strings off the or the the cables off the rest. And right there we're clearing. Um, I always take. I don't guess you have to do this, but I let the bows level right there. And um, what I'll do is I try to level my rest up if I can just ever so slightly 
I've been doing this too long. <laughs> That's pretty good when you get it right on the first try. Put a little tension on it. We'll check our level again. Okay, that's level. That was a little high in the back, not much. Leave it just a little low. Then when we tighten it, it's gonna raise just like that. Boom! Our hand skis running downhill. Alright. Let me get it together here, boys. <coughs> Boom. Yeah, I'll bring it back up just a little bit. That's my fault. I went the wrong way. Oh, this is going to be a long video, guys. I'm sorry. Hopefully, I'll watch it to the end, then. Well, you don't have to do all this funky stuff. I mean, I guess you could just look down. Look down and get it level, but... I think any little bit of chance you get to kind of, you know, make things just a little bit more square, in my opinion, I think that it helps with the all-in-all -all geometry of everything. At least that's my thought process. I'm going to go ahead and put all this over here. And let's see here. We got the black string. Oh, no, I was thinking about changing this out to flow green. I don't know. I might keep that black. I kind of like it. You know. Wait, so if I remember correctly on my other builds, this right here is how this thing wants to be knocked. Now you see we got slight downhill runnage, but that's always worked in the past. And that's how you do it. So I'm gonna tie a knock set here. Pop this off and tie a knock set. And um, the arrows that I'm running are PS26s. So that'll slow the bow down a good bit since, uh, you know, it is a, it's gonna be a target bow. We don't need it to shoot in 310 feet per second. So to my calculations though, it'll shoot about well, I'll put it this way, this same arrow out of a, um, the same bow, same inline, same draw length, it shot 298 out of a 65 pound bow. So this thing probably be three, three, I don't know, maybe 305, maybe something like that. But yeah, we're going to tie this bad boy in and um, yeah. Maybe you guys can see. Hopefully, hopefully I do this right the first time. I know I sound like I'm second guessing myself and all that. I haven't built a inline in a few months. This is B number 
nine or ten that I've built for, you know, what well, this will be the second one for myself. All right. So far, I'm liking this camera mount. So I do like the, the Bomar. Well, I ain't gonna call it any kind of Bomar not or nothing. It's just, I learned it on his uh, Facebook page. I'm gonna do, not Facebook, YouTube. I'm gonna do seven wraps. Something like that. And, um, you know, we'll be honest with you guys. I might get this wrong on this take, and I might have to cut this loose and and get it right. You know, I mean, we are. I've never set one of these up for a fat shaft arrow, but I do know my last one. I set it up this exact same way, and it shot perfect. Hopefully. So this is the third inline that I've had for myself. Now that I think about it, I had a 60 and I had a 65 pounder. Now we got a 70. I like a 70 pound bow. I'm a big dude. Um, and you gotta think you're only gonna shoot 25 times in a target or in a, in a tournament, a 3D. You know, now I'm not gonna go take this thing and shoot field with it. Because I doubt that I'll shoot this bow much past 45.50. Beautiful knot. And I had razor blades down here. I don't know what happened to them. The reason I do the 7, um, I feel like it's a little bit more gentler on your um, serving. It kind of spreads the load out on your serving. So you don't mess it up as bad. The hardest part of all this is getting this stupid knocking point off. Which I'm glad Prime puts. Because that gives you a reference. So, um. A very handy reference. And they do this on their, all their bows. Whoop. thought my camera was going to fall. Yeah, you like this. I'm using electrical strippers to... Pull this knock off. Uh oh. Camera's not liking this. Camera mount is not liking it. I'm trying like that octopus mount I actually found in my house that I didn't even remember having. I seen it and I was like, oh shit. Boom. Hope I didn't hurt that serving this thing. Nope. All right, put that arrow back in there. And um, we'll tie this bad boy up. Make sure we don't get any knock pinch. I am gonna have to find a razor blade in case I have to cut this off. Uh, no, I'm not gonna have it. Well, with my luck, I'll do something wrong and be like, ah, oh, I need to move that thing. Dang it. That's how it always goes. But I set Corey's bow up. My brothers, my dads, they all shoot great. Seven? I'll get, I'll feel a whole lot more comfortable once I pop this thing through paper and I know that my up and down is good. Because if my left and right screwed up, that's easy. I mean, I can, it's just seven eighths off the riser. No, yes. Uh, 15, 16 off the riser, I think. Ooh, we're going to have to look at the manual. We're going to have to look at the manual. I'm thinking about something else. I'm getting all you guys confused with all these numbers spouting out, but I've got so many other bows, like um, setups memorized that. It all kind of runs together sometimes. And remember, this right here, it's critical not to get knock pinch. Because I just done it to my RevX, and I had to cut it all back loose and fix the stuff, and I was not happy.
feel like that wrap screwed up a little bit, but it should be okay. If it moves on me, I'll retie it. It didn't lay out as flat as I like. You know what? I'm going to cut that, cut that bottom one loose. I'm going to redo it because I want it right the first time. So I'll get back with y'all once I get the D-loop on it. I don't know if you boys can see this, but now our knot sets are perfect. And that right there is a perfect amount of play. I went with pin knots. Hopefully, I've never shot pin knots before. I hope that they can hold up to the power of a 70 pound bow. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about pin knots other than I Robin Hood a lot of arrows and hopefully this helps <clears throat> keep this from happening because I built some PS26s and I Robin Hooded damn near all of them. Um, not 26s, 23s. And I ain't lying, man. I, I, I destroy them arrows. We're going to de-loop it up. Less is more because this stuff is high. But you want enough to work with. The way I do it, I mushroom that bad boy up. I don't know how to light it. Good, good mushroom down. If you guys are in the south, we're we're getting a big rain, big rain right now. Um, and that's what allowed me to to come do this today. I just got I just got off work. I worked with Thrift Development, great company. And we worked till the rain came. And I was like, well, I reckon I'll go put a bow together. And I, I make my D-loop small like that. That way when we put our pliers over it, we can cinch it up. Beautiful. I always save these little tags because if you get lucky, you can, I should be able to tie another D-loop with that tag. I need to come up with a way of measuring exactly how much it needs or I need to, to make a D-loop where I don't waste material because stuff's not cheap. Dang it. And I might try that drive cable green. Good gosh. What the devil. I think it's common every bow shop has lighter problems. Every, every, uh, everyone I know, they're always looking for a damn lighter. Hopefully that burnt proficiently. If not, I can retie it. It would have, I know, if I had a good lot of, oh yeah, she's such good. Boom. And um, hopefully I don't have any rotation. Go ahead and correct that just a little bit. Let's see what our knot fit feels like. Feels pretty good. Our D-loop's got to come over, though. Keep all, everything straight. I should have cinched it from the other side. That's my fault. Stupid. So it's sitting there like that. It needs to be more turned. Hmm. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I don't like doing this because it can make the serving come loose. Underneath it, you can get away with it just a little bit, but. So that right there, d loops good and straight. Now let's go set this arrow to seven. Let's look at the, ma the manual. Okay. So we'll go to the manual. Initial marking point. 
Okay, seven eighths off the riser. Seven eighths. Okay, so let's go get our scale, get on seven eighths, and move it out. Boys, so what I'm gonna do is take my scale and I'm gonna adjust the area until it's seven eighths off the riser. And theoretically, we should be pretty damn close to a bullet hole through paper. If we're good through paper, then we'll go shoot indoor at Kiwi and we'll bear shaft tune this thing. And being that this thing's a micro adjust, we'll be able to really fine tune this booger into being super good. And I wanted the micro adjustment, which is what I got. So I'm gonna loosen this, move this out, and we're gonna fire this thing. So you see how the arrow's shoot, coming through the bow right now, it's favoring this way pretty heavy. So we gotta fix that. All right guys, forgive me if the camera angle isn't very good right here. I gotta put a new face on my target too. We've shot it up. Um, this is the first shot out of this bow. I believe I've done everything right. Oh God, that feels good. I love that solid back wall. And this is why you read the instructions. Check this out. It's pretty damn close. Um, it might be just a slight bit high, but that's not a crazy tear. I'm going to fire it a couple more times, kind of break it in, and, and then we'll tune it once we get the bars and everything on the bow. So I'm going to fire it just a few more times, then we'll start mounting some stuff on the bow. But that's pretty good on the first shot. All right, guys, so we started right here, and we got to right here. So that's perfect. That's one, two, three, four, five shots. I've said it in the past. I like to tune one in five shots, and if I don't, then I know that I've made something, I've done something uh, drastically wrong. So let's start building this thing out all the way. We're going to get the peeps out in it, get it right i'm gonna get the bars on it i'm out of the scope so once i get all the bars on it then we'll tune it again um you know i'll probably tune it you know bear shaft tune it but you know it being a target bow it doesn't have to be super critical these are the bars i'm going with where is my wrist sling boom so yeah i'm gonna keep going um it's one of them long, drawn-out videos. Let's see here. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I can put, build this thing in the bow vise with the stabilizer bars on it, but who knows. I'm going to try it. Because whenever I pull it back, I, I like to know how everything feels When I'm setting it up, I'm gonna balance the bow too, the way that I do it. So I'm gonna run just two weights in the front. And then what I'll do, I'm gonna add this back bar. And I'm gonna start slowly stacking weights on it till the bow is neutrally balanced. I wish I had one of those. Um, like balancing jigs, but my buddy at the Archer Shack has one. I mean, you don't have to do all that mess. Okay, so we are nose heavy as hell. Go ahead and have it. <clears throat> Stainless steel rod. Let's get some weights going on here. I'm going to probably say at least six or seven weights it's going to need to be balanced. And these, this right here is the, uh, the weights and setup that we're building. And you can get them in any color, but I like the, uh, the orange and black on this thing, but I really think that black and flow green would look awesome. So I might be trading them out eventually. Boom. It's raining something fierce out there. I was hoping I could. Oh, I was hoping I could go shoot some for you guys, but that ain't happening. But we'll do it tomorrow. We might do like a 
comparison video between the inline and the Rev X. Maybe. <clears throat> Just don't want to cause any problems with anybody. I really love the the inline buttons. Like I say, it's just got, you know, it's so quirky when it comes to tuning, but or to put your D loop and all that stuff in. But as long as you use that brass knock as a reference, you're good. I mean, you see, we just bullet hole with it pretty quick, five shots. Now that's one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna go seven because my my other bow ran ten. Damn it. I should have stacked a black one in between there. It's gonna drive my OCD nuts. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ounces of weight on the back. That should bring this thing on down. Cause when you shoot your bow, you want it to stay level throughout the shot process, at least for me. It's a lot better, but it ain't gonna be enough. I can just tell. I'm going to start stealing some weights off of this bar. I probably could stop recording and get back to listening to Rogan, but I don't know if you can hear that rain, but it's pouring outside. Always know it's gonna be a big rain whenever the TVA, TVA lakes start releasing water. And I got a notification I've seen where they were letting water out of some of the TVA lakes and that's always a dead giveaway. TVA's letting water out, we're gonna get some big rain. They know what's going on. God, it is a sharp looking bow. I love that all black. I'm not a big camouflage bow guy. Um, my Revix is camouflage and it's a nice camo. But this right here, this all black is just beautiful. Especially with the green accents. Probably gonna go ahead and do a green driver cable on that uh on that let's see here on that rest. These things fit together so nicely. Let's see, my last, my last prime, I might have had 10 weights in the back. I might have to 10 weight it. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could drop one in the middle, in the front, but I don't really want to. I'm just gonna go with nine. We're gonna, do, we're gonna try nine. I think it'll be good. Then we'll fire it off and see how it feels because I want the bow to jump forward or to stay neutrally balanced when the shot breaks and not not uh not fall flat on its nose. I want it to stay straight. When I shoot, I want it to like thump. God I'll tell you that thing's already feels a lot better. My little heater is putting out some juice. Juice. getting warm in here. And now this will really tell our tune as well. This should, um, this will either magnify any issues or it's going to completely fix any issues that I have. So we're going to check it out. All right. God, it's boring. Right? Oh my God. Oh, that's nice. So we got just a hair, a little bitty tear, but that's gonna be easily corrected. It's just a little bit, um, a little knock low. I seem to move the rest of just a hair.
No, that's perfect. I was aiming kind of downward because I don't want to. I don't want to shoot through my through my backstop and hit the brick. And I've already done that with some other areas, so I got to fix my stuff soon. Cause draw cycling is great. Oh yeah, she's perfect. She's perfect. She's perfect. Let's take a look at that. So that's what I want. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys, y'all go way back there and chew through paper, fold her back, all that. I don't do that. I haven't had to do that. Um, now, if I'm shooting with broad heads, I'll do that. But I mean, we're working with like, we're working with target arrows. We're working with humongous arrows so I'm not too much worried about that it's good to do it I mean I'll still bear shaft tune it which is shooting a bear shaft shooting a fletched at 20 yard and just cleaning up any little bit till both arrows hit the same spot you don't have to do it on a target bow Chris B even references it in one of his videos I think he talks about some guys put a left hair in a bow. I'm not sure why they he said that. Maybe, don't quote me on that, because I could be wrong. I just thought I thought I heard him say that. But y'all yeah, Melissa's from Rogan to get this thing fully built. So I'll let y'all guys see the in progress. Boom! Alright guys, this is how she looks. All done. I did go with the green drive cable. So this was uh Perfect and perfect. Boom, boom. That was all loaded down. Um, I'll take that to the bank. So, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. And we'll probably upload this to the second channel. And that is a prime inline build. She's beautiful. Let's go.